This lesson, we're going to be having some fun with forms. So we're going to create a simple form with just the one question asking for a number, favorite number, create a spreadsheet that's going to be attached to the form. So we're able to capture all of the form responses. And then within the app script, we're going to be covering how we can create a separate custom log. So in this case, we're logging values using a customized function that's going to log the submission information within a new sheet named log. Uh, this information is captured if you use the logger log function. That's going to capture it, but it's not going to be able to see it within the execution log, uh, although you can see it within the executions. And then if you select the trigger, you can see the information from the execution log there within the cloud logs. We're also going to be creating a custom function so that we can capture that information directly within the spreadsheet. So it's going to have a running list of every time one of these logs is running. And we're also going to be checking to see if there is an email address. And if it is, they're going to be sending an auto response email that's going to say thank you. And also we're going to be sending an email to the script owner. And in this case, it's going to be the same account here. It's going to be sending that this form has been submitted. So when you go to submit the form, it's going to ask for an email address. So I'm going to go ahead and add in an email address, adding the plus five so that I get a different email address than the script owner, and then also tracking a number. So add in whatever number you want. We can go into the form responses. So there's our date, our, our email address, and then the value there. And this is also being captured within the log using the custom Google Apps script. And then once we go over to our inbox, we can see that it did send us a thank you response and then also sent us a notification as a script owner that that script ran. So that's all that we're going to be covering in this lesson coming up. Go ahead and log into your Google account. Go over to your Google dashboard and select a new form. You can also go over to Drive and then from the drive, select new. And then from there, you can create a new Google form. So this is going to be a really basic form that we're going to be using for testing for this application. So it can add not multiple fields here. We can have multiple choice questions. So there's options for different types of questions. This is just going to be a regular short answer. And then of course you can add in and customize the form however you need. And then within the settings, under responses, we can collect the email address. We can send responders a copy of their response. We can also allow editing of the response and we can limit the number of responses. So right now, by default, it requires sign in and we can limit it to one response. If we want, we can set that as well. We can also make it a quiz under the responses. So this is where the responses will go when users submit data into your form and here is also where you can connect it to a google spreadsheet so you can by default set it to collect into a google spreadsheet you can also link it to an existing spreadsheet you can also get your notifications of the new responses so there's a lot of options here and you can also download a csv of all of the responses we're going to be going ahead and creating a new spreadsheet so we can also from here, from this menu, we can select an existing spreadsheet, but we're going to create a new spreadsheet. That's the default select create, and that's going to open up and create a brand new spreadsheet. So this is where the response information will go from the form. You can go and try it out, selecting the preview, which will give you the link for the form. And it's going to be asking for the email address. So by default, we're just using my default email address and then whatever the favorite number is. Once we submit the form, you can see that now that information has been submitted into the field. You can also customize the information so we can change the settings. So we're not gonna collect the email addresses by default. And there's also uh, the defaults here. So collect email addresses by default. So we don't wanna have that turned on. So turning that off will allow us to have the form without the email addresses. So let's try that one more time. So right now it's just going to be asking for the favorite number and then submit. And now when we go in, we see that it's still submitting into that form responses one within the spreadsheet. So what we want to do with using app script is capture that submission 
so the form submission, and run some code in between. So when the form gets submitted, we'll capture that submission and run some code. Within the spreadsheet that we just created, you can also select under the tools. You can manage a form, you can create a form, so you can edit the form, go live form, send form, embed form into a web page. There's a number of options there for the forms once it's attached to the spreadsheet. So these are options that are only attached within a Google Sheet that is attached to a form. So the, under extensions, we've got the Apps Script Editor. So from there, we can select the Apps Script Editor and open up a script and give this one a name. So I'm gonna call it Test Capture. And there's a default function. So you can just rename that and call it My Submit. So this is the code that's gonna run whenever the form is submitted. And we're gonna add this as a trigger that's gonna be sitting within the spreadsheet that we just created. And that spreadsheet again is attached to the form. So we're gonna access to that form submission. So within the My Submit, Let's set the logger log, and we'll track the E object. And then once we've created that, let's go into the triggers. So it does need to have at least one function. So it's still saving that function. So that's why it's throwing the error. So there's the function that we just created, the event source. So we can select it as a time-driven from calendar or from the spreadsheet. And then going down to the spreadsheet, we've got the on form submit function that we want to run. And then whenever there's any issues, I usually do set it to notify me immediately. Um, you can also set it hourly, daily, or weekly. So once you've set the trigger, and the trigger is from the trigger on the left-hand side, you have to accept permissions for the trigger to run. So go through the permissions screen within the app script and allow the permissions for the function and the trigger to run within the form submission. So now whenever we submit the form, and we can go over to the manage form, select under the manage form, go live form. And this is where it's asking for the favorite number. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add in the favorite number and submit the information. So there's our submission. And then now when we go into the apps script, we can see that uh, this trigger has executed under the executions, there's the time that the function ran. And then if we go back into the script e editor, we've got the execution log, and you're gonna notice that we didn't log actually anything into the logger event. So this is something that you can also create a separate custom logging. So usually what I do is I'll create it within the spreadsheet, or you can create it in a separate spreadsheet, and I'll just create a sheet called log. So this will give us a place to log the information using the Google Apps script. So by default within the logger log and the execution is running in the background, you're not gonna see anything within the execution logs, even though when you go into the executions, this did actually complete. And we've got the cloud log where we've got the object object. So that contains the information that was set. Even if you do a JSON stringify of the object and then you make a second submission, you can go into the executions, see that there was a second execution, and this is gonna actually have the stringified object information. So if you want to capture this, and let's say you want to capture that directly within the spreadsheet, this is gonna be a quick way to be able to do that, where we're gonna be connecting to a particular sheet. So this is just a simple function that you can use to add or add log and then whatever the data is that we want to log. It's gonna select the spreadsheet object. So we just select it as a variable called SS and spreadsheet. Select the get active spreadsheet. So that will open the selected spreadsheet object. And then we want to select the sheet, select the get sheet by name, and then use the string value in order to indicate which sheet you want to select and this one is in this case going to be named log. So that's going to select the actual spreadsheet and then we can simply append a row of the data into the spreadsheet. So that will be the next one and we don't have to have a variable as we're not going to be really doing anything with the variable. So this is selected the sheet object and then select the append row and this is going to be expecting an array structure. 
So if you wrap data within the array, it's going to use that data value within the first sheet. And you can also do the JSON stringify, just to be sure if you are always passing in objects, that will allow you to stringify that JSON object. So now if we wanted to add it to a log, we can select the object information and add it into the log whenever the spreadsheet is submitted. So let's go ahead and we're gonna make another submission. Submit that. And when we go into the form, there's our next submission. And then we've got the object information there submitted. So you can make use of this object information. And this is just a way that you can track that information directly within the spreadsheet instead of having to go into the app script and then selecting under the executions and then going through all of the executions. This is going to continuously log it within the same spreadsheet and that way it gives you an easy way to look over and see what's been happening within the spreadsheet. So that's the next submission. You can also select it by under the object information, so the named values, we've got the email address and so on. So the named values is going to be sitting as an object. So one, two, three, four. So if you did know what your named values are, and sometimes uh, when you do update the form and you update the, this information, this will also be reflected within the spreadsheet. So that's going to update automatically because they are connected and they are tied together. So that will also change that object information that we're tracking. So it's no longer going to log the one, two, three. It'll be named values. And then within the named values, you're going to see something called number. And then we're going to be making uh, accessing that. So it is a little bit tricky, but you can select those object and those values that way as well and log them out into separate parts. So if it's only that you're logging that particular data, so that data coming in, you can select it under the name named values. And then this is a property with an attached object value to it. So selecting the E object and we'll select the named values. So now we're just getting the named values. So we've got number, email addresses and timestamp. So now we can get more granular with the data. We don't necessarily need to stringify the data. If we know that this is the data that we want to append, we can break it apart into the object names. We can see here that we've got one called number. So this is going to be contained within data and looking for number. It does have to be accurate. And that's going to return back the associated value for that, which is also going to be in an array. And then we can take that out of the array. There's also email address and timestamp. So you can hard code these or you can loop through the object information. So this is data. And then within the data, we've got the email address bracketed data. And then we did have one last piece within the object and that's the timestamp. So we can select the timestamp and then also add that under the data save that and let's do another submission of the data and these are just different ways that you can manage the data that you've got coming into the object so it is coming back as an object format so we need to also select that where we've got the index values because this isn't going to be an array so let's go back and we'll submit another set of numbers and so now we're actually able to extract that information out because it is returning back an array so we're just selecting that first item within the array and that way whatever we're submitting it's going to break it apart into the separate columns within our tracking sheet so there was no email address that one's that's why that one is blank uh, but again keep in mind if you do change the question data that's going to change that column information and that's also going to change the object information that we're selecting. So this is a quick way that you can add your own custom log into your form submissions. And then of course, within the My Submit, uh, you can do other things as well where you could send a return response, auto response email. You can also send an email to yourself that uh, this particular form has been submitted. 
Uh, so let's do that quickly where we'll select an email address where we can get the active user from the session. And then this is where we can get the email address. So that will provide an email address. So now we're ready to send an email, that uh, an email notification. The form has been filled out. Uh, and then you can also customize this as needed. So this is gonna be the sending of the email. We're using the send mail method and we need to select two. So this is gonna require an object with some information. Uh, so first thing that we need is the email address that's going to. So we can have some data there within the subject and then the HTML body. So this can just be regular HTML code. And what I'll do is I'll create the variable called HTML and we'll use the JSON stringify value of the named values under E. And you can of course customize this as needed. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna send the email. We need to accept the permissions first. So you can run the function to accept permissions and allow the script to send an email. So right now it's sending, throwing an error because there's nothing coming in as within the E object. Uh, so now let's try that within a live form, add in a number, and then we can see, so there's our Google alert. And here's the form submit with the information from the form submission. Let's go back into the form and under the settings, we'll collect the email address and collect the email address by default. Uh, now let's go back and we'll select the form. So it's gonna require an email address. And if you are selecting an email address, uh, this is gonna give you more information within the form so that that way you can select that email address and you can even send them a response back or an auto response. So this can also be done where if there is an email address within the email address object within the script, we can send an email to that user as well. So let's do a selection where we've got under the named values. So if the named values email address zero object is not equal to null, then we can send an email to that person. And we can just use the email address or we can shorten this. And so this can be a thank you. Then you can construct your own custom HTML thank you value there. So let's see how that works. So now we've got our email address and just copy paste that in and select a number. And now let's see what we get within the emails. So it should be sending one email as a thank you. So this is auto responding email. And then we've got another email going to the script owner that the form information has been selected. So that's how you can add in additional functionality within your form submission.